Hello and welcome back to another anesthesia tutorial. Today we'll be going through the vomiting reflex. Vomiting, or emesis, is a reflex action in which the contents of the stomach are involuntarily and forcefully evacuated through the esophagus and out through the mouth. While unpleasant, this reflex is incredibly useful, being able to rapidly evacuate a potentially harmful substance from the body without having to wait for it to pass all the way through the GI tract, with it potentially causing serious damage on the way through, is a huge advantage, especially when you consider all the potentially harmful things early foragers and carnivores must have consumed. But anatomically, the main control centre for this process is seated deep within the medulla. So what happens during the vomiting reflex? The vomiting centre triggers a complex, coordinated chain of events, starting with the closure of the glottis to protect the airway, and the soft palate is lifted to try and protect the nasopharynx from the gastric contents. There is also excessive salivation, which may compensate for the acidity of the gastric contents as they pass through the mouth, and tachycardia, which might serve to increase oxygen supply to the tissues while the glottis is closed and the person's not breathing. Next, there is a powerful downwards contraction of the diaphragm and the gastroesophageal junction relaxes. The abdominal muscles contract forcefully and there is a large retroperistaltic wave from the duodenum into the pylorus. All of this serves to increase intra-abdominal pressure and force the stomach contents up through the esophagus. And hopefully the vast majority of this leaves the body through the mouth, although it can occasionally force its way through the nose as well. So let's take a closer look at how this process is actually triggered. Imagine you are the vomiting centre, tasked with protecting the body from harmful chemicals. Now the main way in which these chemicals are entering the body are through the digestive tract, as the body you inhabit attempts to feed itself by shoveling anything it can find into its mouth. Therefore it makes sense for you to evolve a primary defence mechanism of ejecting stomach contents, as most of the time this will get rid of the problem. Great, now the next issue is knowing when to do this. As the gatekeeper in charge of pressing the eject button, you're going to want a lot of other messengers and sensors feeding you information so that you get rid of all the harmful stuff, but don't keep needlessly ejecting essential food. What next? The cerebellum. Think about motion sickness. While very inconvenient and often debilitating, given that humans have not evolved to fly on planes, to go around corners at 50 miles an hour while sat down, or to roll back and forth on a boat for hours on end, it seems reasonable that when the inner ear detects this totally unexpected set of signals from the labyrinth, its first assumption is that the body has been poisoned, and probably from eating something, and therefore triggers the vomiting centre. This largely acts via muscarinic and histamine receptors. Now two other sensible triggers would be physical obstruction of the pharynx, as is seen in the gag reflex, or over distension of the stomach, for example after eating far too quickly, both of which trigger the vomiting centre via the solitary tract nucleus, which is also in the medulla right next to the vomiting centre. Again, these work via familiar receptors. Finally, we come to the somewhat more complicated higher centre inputs. Most people don't enjoy watching other humans vomit, and we feel a sensation called disgust, which is probably the most beneficial sensation to survival of a species, as it allows for rapid learning of what to eat and what to avoid. Disgust, such as revulsion to seeing, smelling, or even hearing something noxious, makes sense as a communal survival mechanism. Seeing another member of your species vomiting after eating a particular plant is going to make you less likely to try it. Meanwhile, the uncomfortable retching induced by the rancid smell of rotting meat is an effective way to avoid ingesting a whole load of harmful bacteria. There are many complex emotions that feed into the vomiting centre from these higher centres, and among others they use neurokinin 1 to communicate this to induce the reflex. And as you can imagine, this complex coordinated response requires multiple cranial nerves to be utilised, and the main contenders are 5, 7, 9, 10 and 12. Now that we've got the underlying mechanism and the relevant hormones and neurotransmitters in front of us, it becomes clear why we use the antiemetic drugs that we do, because they each target at least one of these receptors. It also makes sense why it is claimed that the antihistamines are best for preventing motion sickness and why metoclopramide is used to help the sickness caused by gastric stasis in migraine. The steroids also have an antiemetic effect, which is largely poorly understood, but it might be through artificially increasing appetite. And there you have it, 
the vomiting reflex and the common drugs that we use to treat it. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe for more tutorials and head over to anesthesia.net, which is linked below, for the PDF of this cartoon, which you can download for free. See you next time.